Hello and welcome to the third video in Scanning Your Art. My name is Adrian Story from Jack Fine Art Printing and in this video we'll be going through colour space and bit depth. So before I start talking about colour spaces and bit depth, I thought it would be good to have a look at how we and our cameras or scanners perceive colour. As you may recall from our school days uh, when we had to shine a white light through a prism we would see this rainbow effect, the visible spectrum. Now if you've got perfect colour vision that would be the colour space that we work in. We can't see UV or infrared so as far as colour spaces are concerned these are out of gamut. So if we now have a look at the eye in particular to the retina this consists of rods which help us see in very low light levels and cones. It's the cones that really govern our, the colour space that we can see and consists of red, green and blue receptors. The strength of the signal that each receptor receives allows us to see all the different shades within a colour. In digital imaging these cones are called channels and how sensitive they are is controlled by the bit depth that we use. Now with digital imagery uh, we can also control these cones by selecting a colour space such as sRGB or Adobe RGB. So the same principle applies to our digital camera or scanner. Here the retina is replaced by our sensor. There's two main types that are used, the CCD and the CMOS. Uh, you can find out what type you have by looking at the specification sheets. Now these work in very much the same way. Light passes through the lens of the camera, hits the sensor and here the light is then split into the red, green and blue. The cones in the eye are replaced by the, a filter and the most common type that's used is this Bayer filter. There are lots of different variations on this pattern but uh, that's the basic principle of all of them. So you may have had a look on Google at different colour spaces and just been bombarded with lots of different diagrams. The most common type you'll see is this thumbnail uh, which is a chromaticity chart. This represents the brightest red, green and blue that we can see and where these converge is white. Now our eyes are constantly making adjustment for where this white point is but when we start working with colour spaces this white point now becomes fixed. In the case of Adobe RGB and sRGB this white point is known as D65 or 6500 Kelvin. So whenever you've scanned a piece of art and you've seen the paper as white but it's come out as grey, it's because how we see the white and how the colour space sees white are two different things. So when we start looking at colour spaces what we're seeing here is the brightest colours that that space can reproduce. In this case here we can see the sRGB and then the range extends as when we apply the Adobe RGB colour space. So if you would like to have a, a more detailed view of these colour spaces you can pop along to this website at www.iccview.de Here you can see we have a, a 3D map in this case I'm comparing the sRGB which is the colour version and the Adobe RGB which is this wireframe version there you can see how the colour spaces relate not just from the top view that you get with a chromaticity graph but you can also see what's going on underneath with the darker colours you can also upload different profiles by clicking on here so here I've uploaded a the Canon Fine Art Textured and I'll just compare that one to the Adobe So here you can see there this area here I'd be more saturated than the Adobe but the rest of the colours would be well within the gamut of that colour space. So it's a really good tool if you just want to check out what would be the best colour space for you to use but ideally you want to be capturing as much information as you possibly can. So we can control each of these channels by using our bit depth. The easiest way to, to picture this really is to imagine that each one has a dimmer switch. They can be off or fully on. How bright they are determine, is determined by the colour space that we've decided to use. Now, When we open these images up in Photoshop we usually have two options, 8-bit or 16-bit. 8-bit will give us 
256 steps between off and fully on. When we're looking at buying a, a camera or a scanner, this information is given in a slightly different way. Photoshop gives us the bit per channel, so there's 8 bits in red, 8 bits in green and 8 bits in blue. When we're buying our camera or scanner, this will give us the total. So Photoshop is 8 bit, this is the same as 24 bit for our camera or scanner. And as you can see here, the 48 bit for our camera is the same as 16 bit in Photoshop. You also see that the 16 bit has a whopping great 655,536 steps between being off and being at maximum brightness. So it's going to try contain a lot more information than a, a standard 8 bit image. Now, just to confuse the issue a little bit more, Photoshop uses a scale that goes from 0 to 255. It doesn't matter if you're using 8 bit or 16 bit, the information's still there, but just for ease of use. Uh, Photoshop uses the 0 to 255. So we have a look now. You can see that the 8 bit has 256 steps per channel, and we've got three channels. This gives us a quite substantial 16.8 million combinations. This increases quite a bit when we switch to the 16 bit. Here it suddenly shoots up to 28.1 trillion combinations. Now it should be pointed out that each of these combinations is limited to the color space that you've selected. So we can see what's going on if I show you a picture in Photoshop. First off you can see that up here we've got an RGB color done in 8-bit. And if we come over here we have the layers and the channels. So we'll just click on the channels here. So we've got default red, green and blue. But we need to turn off one of these or turn off two. So that's how much information is coming through on the red. If we look at the yellow of the sun, for example, we've got quite a lot of red coming through and quite a lot of green coming through. But if we combine these two, we get the yellow. And if we look at the blue channel, we can see there's hardly any yellow, hardly any blue in the yellow whatsoever. So that's basically how your picture is made up using RGB color spaces.